And this is what happens when you work and then stay up all night recording, watching movies, and editing videos. Tonight's film was a film called Hell House. The synopsis of it was that it's kind of a found footage documentary style thing about a haunt, like which is a haunted house, that things go awry and something crazy happens. And they do kind of a good job of really making this seem like it's a documentary about this event that happened, where they have like police, um, reporters, photographers from the actual event, and they just interview a couple people. And one of the people that they end up interviewing is one of the girls actually from the haunt that was part of the crew that put the haunt on. And it kind of just spends the first portion of the movie really kind of doing that documentary style feel where they're interviewing people, talking to people. And then kind of the second, third, if you will, of the film, they find one of the girls who works for the haunt and interview her and she has tapes because they made the footage and like the security cams from the actual event but then they also kind of documented themselves as setting up this hotel and everything like that which I think kind of played out pretty well for the most part. Some things that were really cool about the movie that I really enjoyed was the little details. So there was a lot of a majority of the movie was just footage from them setting up the haunt up till the day of the haunt and then the events of what happened at the haunt and then slightly after the haunt, which is like the final portion of the film. But during that setting up the haunt, really kind of just building into the atmosphere of this place is creepy. When they first get there, they're kind of touring the place and just seeing all like the creepy things of it because it's an abandoned place that had been abandoned since like the late 80s, I think is what it was. And just various creepy things, shattered plates, old books that like when you crack them open, like actually like crack open um, empty bottles. And then they go down into the cellar, which you think it could be another part of the haunt. And there's already pentagrams spray painted on the walls, crosses and shit like that. So it's kind of creepy and they're feeling it. And as time progresses, things just start happening that they don't really have an explanation to, specifically to one guy. He's the one that's filming most of it, so it's him capturing most of it. <sighs> I can't make it through this. There's creepy elements to it that I think could play into a lot of people's fears, like one of the clowns, which is how this house is kind of making its apparition of its entity or whatever. Um, which is actually just supposed to be a dummy, but the dummy starts like being in places it's not supposed to be or doing things that it doesn't normally do. Like its head apparently for the dummy doesn't actually move, but there's a scene where the head, the head of it actually goes. And so kind of cool little things here and there. Another thing that I really enjoyed about the film was little details and little things that not everybody would catch. Um, one example that I can think of is when they're using the footage from the YouTube video uploaded of somebody who actually went through the haunt while well, things were going crazy and then kind of the catching the tail end of what happened on footage. There's a couple scenes where they're just painted through the place and things aren't where they're supposed to be or where you know they're supposed to be because you watch them set this thing up. And one of them is the main guy with the curly hair. I can't think of his name. I don't know why. It's said a million times. They're going through the kitchen or like the dining hall area of the thing and you can see him sitting next to the door and then the camera kind of moves away real quick because this person's just kind of moving through and looking at everything that's going on and it goes back and he's not there but meanwhile he's supposed to be upstairs sleeping because he wasn't feeling good so just little things like that and there's a lot of those where something's there and then suddenly they go back it's not there anymore and I thought that was a kind of a cool little detail I like when they like hide little things like that that some people won't notice and they'll just kind of blow past it because they're so focused on everything that's going on. Other people who are less engaged into well, like what's going on because it's not something that really plays into their fear necessarily is spending more time like paying attention to the little details and stuff like that. And not just different people in general. I thought things were done really well. Personally, scary houses or haunts, whatever you want to call them, not really my cup of tea. Um, I, I really enjoy the horror genre and I like watching scary movies and that kind of creepy spooky feel. 
I don't know why, it's just not something that I enjoy actually going to. And I'm not trying to say, like, oh, I'm not afraid of haunts. Like, no, like, I've gone haunts and, like, shit will scare me. Like, a lot of times it's pop out stuff. Um, me and my wife, actually, our first date, we went to a haunted corn maze. And she was losing her mind. Me, personally, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, eh. And it wasn't really well done, necessarily. Like, I didn't think anything was too crazy about it. But there was a couple things that just scared me just because you're not expecting it. Like, I was walking, we were walking through a couple corridors, and out of nowhere, just a freaking, like, train horn. Bomb! Like, why the f would I expect that to be in a corn maze? So, things like that. And, like, I like those, like, jump scares, like, things that really kind of get your blood pumping. Those, I think, are really cool, more so than just, like, a creepy person making clicky noises standing next to me. Like, that doesn't, that doesn't do it for me. So, haunts... Uh, they're just they're not my thing personally but I would I would love actually at some point to be part of a haunt I think that would be cool being like the one scaring people um I just think that that would be when I like to screw with my wife and every once in a while like sneak up on her and, ah, and stuff like that and even her she'll sometimes get me with those um and I really enjoy those moving more to my opinions and thoughts of the film so the little details of things, like being there for one second and then not the next, I thought was really cool. I really like when movies do that because it's things that you might not catch on the first time. So rewatchability is always good because you might catch something the next time that you didn't catch the first time. So that's kind of cool for me. I didn't really care much for the found footage aspect. I've seen found footage films that I think are executed really well, but this one just kind of didn't hit the mark for me. And I think part of the reason that that is, is just some of the camera angles. And again, it could just me being really picky, but there's one scene right before the night of the haunt where things have started getting pretty crazy. Some people are like, we need to get the out of here. Some people are like, oh, you guys are just being like skeptical and blah, 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 blah. And there's these two dudes sitting in a field, which cool, sure. But the way that the camera set up there's one guy basically sitting in the field by himself, like just messing with the grass, like just thinking and kind of just doing random stuff. And then another guy comes up and starts talking to him. And again, when you think about it, the camera is set there, which means this guy was like, I'm just going to record myself sitting in the field. Let me put my camera right here real quick. And then that scene gets filmed, which is great for the story. But again, with the execution, like it's just kind of just not feasible if you will I liked that they kind of switched up who was filming a couple times because it really was set with the one main curly haired guy and then they kind of changed it to some other people that started doing the filming instead but again there's other parts where things are filmed that just don't make sense to be filmed so I don't know that just that just me being kind of picky cool kind of little things but kind of really dumb things at the same time was after everything said and done you've watched the found footage that Sarah just miraculously has and at the very end of that footage she is basically trying to escape the house after everything's gone down in the basement with like the random shadow people and stuff like that then like she just gets beat with the camera and then dragged off so you're kind of thinking like, okay, maybe she died. Maybe she actually survived because as it stated in the beginning of the movie, she's a survivor. And then it kind of moves into a spoiler zone. It moves into this, okay, maybe she's not actually alive anymore. And then the found footage ends and goes to back to her sitting and talking and she mentioning that she's in, she's staying at, in room 2C, she doesn't feel good, and she needs to take a break, they can come find her. So then they go and they find out, like, there's no 2C at this hotel, I'm like, what the hell? And then, so they go to the house, they find a way in, which a door just miraculously open all of a sudden, and as they're touring the house, they decide they go up the stairs, and 2C, and what I really liked was the framing of the shot, where... You have the door and you can see a window over on the left that's open 
but there's like the way that the paper is like ripped and stuff like that it just shines this perfect beacon right onto your seat so I thought that was kind of cool because it really kind of highlighted and like let people know like who weren't really paying attention before it was mentioned by the actress that was the reporter of the documentary like oh shit that's 2c and then open the door and sarah's in there and she's all messed up and you kind of realize that she's just an entity at that point so it was kind of cool that they did that um i thought that was kind of a cool little twist to add to the end of it another cool thing was the name of the town with the um, being abaddon new york which i didn't think was a real place so i googled it and turns out it's not a real place. So it's kind of cool that they made up a town for this film. Um, and especially with the whole reference of in some iterations of the Bible, the Abaddon is the basically the keeper of hell, like the guard, the guardian of the portal to hell. So it was kind of a cool little just random thing that they added in there that really didn't need to be there, but it was just cool that somebody thought that idea up. It was like, hey, let's throw this in the movie. So that's kind of cool. Um, as far as the creepy haunted place um in my life i have done many many jobs and i did work for a restaurant called the i go in i go in not like i go in yeah anyways and it was just this creepy old i guess like way back in the 1800s used to be like a hotel type thing when really now it's just kind of this dining hall thing and it was creepy and so I kind of know where the cast was coming from like when they were like staying there like and being like this place is creepy as fuck um so for me personally that was just kind of cool because like it's something i've experienced and i know kind of the feeling of weird things happening that don't make sense and again in previous videos i've mentioned don't necessarily believe in ghosts don't don't believe in ghosts i don't care to find out um and so when weird things happen i obviously logically my mind's like oh Something just fell, blah, 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 blah. It's raining a bump. Like, there's always an explanation. But part of my mind's like, ghosts, that's the explanation. So all in all, reading this movie, I'm not crazy about it. I don't think it's one I'd watch again. Some things, like I said, were really done, really done well. Just little hidden things. The story and the twist of it i really enjoyed but that was really about it i wasn't blown away by any of the acting some of the shots just didn't make sense to me so i'm gonna give this one a six in the sense that it wasn't a bad watch but again it's not something i watch again and i just wasn't crazy feeling it like i wasn't super drawn into the movie like i was with the uh, previous two i was like oh this is nuts. So this one I just kind of like, eh. Chilling on the couch, watching a movie. So, check it out if you want to. Again, it's called Hell House LLC. It's not a Shutter exclusive this time, but it is on Shutter. Um, I believe it's also on like Tubi TV and a couple other random things. So if you really do want to watch it, you won't have to pay for it. Tubi TV is a free app that you can download that has movies and stuff. I think there's some ads within the movies and stuff or before the movies. But it might be worth checking out. I think that's going to basically uh, do it for this one. <laughs>